is this worth it? Is it? Well, and I wouldn't necessarily want to give her more attention, but this does bring up the thing. Are you allowed to like Five Nights at Freddy's and still think Scott Cawthon's conservatism is cringe? Yes. I like the FNAF series. I think it's got interesting writing. I think it's got good stuff in it. I like the new game is... So, uh, where do I start? So, you'll probably notice a couple weeks ago we talked about J.K. Rowling and her continued stupidity. That is, J.K. Rowling has fallen in with a hate movement known as TERFs, or as they like to call themselves as a euphemism, gender critical. Um, and we've talked about them a lot on this channel. Um, specifically that TERFs by their nature are a hate movement, no different than the KKK or the Proud Boys or any other one. Their goal is to specifically target a minority of people and try to continually take rights from those people. We saw this during the Dave Chappelle stuff. We saw this during J.K. Rowling's lie about her being doxxed. We've seen this a hundred times. So you're probably asking, why are we talking about her again? And I saw this article from Vox and I thought it was interesting. So bear with me. Can Harry Potter ever be okay? The rumor Harry Potter TV series isn't worth enabling J.K. Rowling's transphobia. So, as many people know, the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter is coming up, and they did not invite J.K. She was left off the the, um, get-together. The reason for that is, is because she is a hate monger, and the actors don't like her, or at least don't want to engage with her. Um, This also seems... Especially strange because Warner Brothers recently came out and said they were doubling down on continuing to work with J.K. Rowling despite her behaviors. The app that was a ripoff of Pokemon Go for wizarding is being canceled, apparently. That's the thing I heard about. And so there's all these things happening around here, and it sort of brought up a question for me, and that is... Not anymore, Ellie. There, as far as I can tell, they all kind of doubled down on trans rights. Um, oh, used to be. Used to be, yeah. Got it. Used to be friends, yeah. Um, a lot of them have come out pretty well in the, yeah, this is not okay. Yeah. Feel free to look up statements and fact check that. So, what I wanted to talk about is, this con- this 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 thing that comes up all the time is, Why, or I guess, how does one interact with media when somebody is this vitriolic and toxic? Now, the immediate immediate gut reaction is to do something like, let's say, go through and boycott. But if you're someone who's put a lot of effort into the wizarding, wizarding world, you're somebody who really likes that world, that can be a hard thing. And so we get into this problem where I've noticed and seen clients and my friends and other people really struggle with liking things that are problematic. And so I kind of wanted to talk about that. As TMS said in chat, it is kind of death of the author thing, but I'm more looking at it from the psychological perspective. I want to talk about the harm that J.K. Rowling has done to her readers. Because if we think about this critically, it stands to reason that A lot of people have been hurt by JK, and I don't just mean trans people. If you're someone who loves a trans person, if you're a trans ally or the parent of a trans kid, or you are the lover of a trans person or whatever, seeing this kind of stuff when you used to get up in robes and show up for the newest like Harry Potter opening and you carried your books with you and always got them signed, like we can make fun of that stuff because it's quote unquote cringe, but it really isn't like that. That aspect of fandom, I don't really feel bothered by that. I just think it's cute. I don't do it. No, those those parts were like. The Harry Potter books were fun. Like when there was a new book opening and there was like some big festival in like this random small town and you happen to live there and get to attend. Like, no, that stuff was neat. Let's be like, that was really cool. I've done a few of those. Um, Yeah. And so I think the thing for me is, is that how do you engage with this stuff? 
because here's the problem. Most of my my understanding of our, our community is that y'all are basically like soak Dems or socialists or some mixture therein. And so the problem is, is that you probably know the phrase very well, you know, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. And this becomes very true in this circumstance. There is no way in which you can engage or not engage and still be in an ethical place. So the problem is, is we have to go by a gradient. Do I think it's problematic if someone buys Harry Potter merchandise at this point in the game? I would prefer they didn't, but am I really that particularly bothered by it? JK's a fucking billionaire. Even if we pulled all the money out of it right now and she somehow lost the franchise, it would do nothing to her. When you are at that level of omni wealth, there's nothing that that does. It might be an annoyance, it might be a bother, but is it really going to affect her? Not really. The people it's going to affect most likely are actors, people who are working on these things, such as, you know, the behind the scenes folks on movies, you know, the people who work at the publishing companies. That's where this stuff gets really hard is that sometimes I feel like we often throw out the notion of avoid, avoid, avoid without thinking about the overall effects of a thing. Or we just don't listen to our own sense of our own sense of like desire. Like there are things about Harry Potter I dislike and I still really like the fourth movie. I like it a lot, actually. The fourth movie has some cool shit in it, like Mad-Eye Moody being super over the top and literally murdering a bug with a kill curse in the movie. It's neat. It also explained to me what was happening at the end of uh, Harry Potter 2, where, like, literally, Lucius Malfoy was pulling his damn wand in his cane out like a badass and is about to kill, yell Avada Kedavra at a child. Like... I'm just saying, like, there is value to these things, but the problem is, is that JK's transphobia and overall bigotry really does become an issue where if this rumored television show they're talking about making, and right now it is a rumor, and as they say here, but the possibility alone means we have to ask whether a new Harry Potter series can ever be okay. And to answer that question, we may have to understand exactly how and why Rowling's transphobia tainted the beloved Harry Potter universe and what possibilities, if any, exist for the Harry Potter franchise to heal some of the hurt its creator has caused. So we get into this stuff, and we've talked about it ad nausea. She supports anti-science, basically an anti-vaxxer as far as I'm concerned. Except her anti-science in this case is she refuses to listen to the overall medical and psychological plurality of data showing that, you know, I'm a woman. Also like 20% of something else, but we won't get into that. I am a woman. Full stop. That's the information. There's no other additional data there. This has been decided by research and all that. And you can see the anti-intellectualism anti like of this in the right, where you'll see posts such as, you know... Why should we listen to the science when the science said there's more than two genders? That's not an argument. That's just anti-intellectual dumbassery. And so the problem is, is that not only has JK been very public on Twitter about her transphobia, she's also put out sci a scientifically flawed and quite stupid manifesto, basically claiming, I was assaulted, thus men scare me, I believe trans women are men, so now trans women are scary, and we're doing these terrible things to kids, except we're not doing those things to kids, but I don't want to talk about that because I like fear-mongering. And so this gets into an issue. Oh, Scout said the upcoming Hogwarts game has sparked a discussion between supporting the devs and not supporting turf bullshit. Well, and the question is, is what level did she have involvement in it, and how much of the money is she getting for it? Did she just license the IP, in which case she's already been paid? Buying the game does nothing now, other than help the devs. If she's directly involved and helped write it, then no, her actual amount she gains from it is going to be dependent on the how well the game does. Like, this is really easy things to figure well, out. Well, and, and also, what um, kind of content are they putting in it? Right. Um, you know, know, well, yes. I mean, is there going to be, like, anti-trans sentiment or just, you know... Um... Is everything going to be all right? Everybody's straight ahead. Oh, that's fine. All this is fine. Fine, fine, fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... And, yeah, on. I just can't know what kind of content they would end up putting in either. Now, you have to remember, JK lost a Human Rights Award because of her nonsense. And 
not only that, but she's recently put out a tweet that is just the worst. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. The penis individual who sexually assaulted you is a woman. Try to avoid the R word when possible. Um, this was a tweet she put out. Everything is wrong with this. This is this is literally this is literally like fascist newspeak. Do you guys see that right? Like out of fourteen points by Echo, this is literally newspeak. You see Nazis say these first three lines, talking about how they've been blinded by the blue pill or whatever this stupid thing they fuck what metaphor they decide to adopt. This woman is absolutely harmful to everything around her. She harms marginalized communities in the form of trans people, especially trans people of color. She's probably one of the major reasons, as a, as a, at very least as a figurehead, not really an actor, but a figurehead in regards to why the UK is called Turf Island. Turfs have always been around. There was a book in the 80s called The Transsexual Empire. These assholes have always existed. But the fact that they've gotten so mobilized and so organized, no, JK is kind of part of that, even indirectly. And so, will it ever be okay to make new Harry Potter stories? Probably not. And this gets to the issue of sort of my, my concern about this. On the one hand, I don't give a fuck what you consume, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. I'm being honest about that. There are some things I might give you the side eye about, right? Like, there's some content that is legal, but I would still kind of like... What you doing there? Yeah, like, maybe stop it. But, I'm not really going to give anyone huge amounts of shit. If they're legally able to obtain this thing and it's not hurting anybody, I don't care. You can watch all the harem anime you want. You can watch all the crazy violence you want. I don't care. People's choices for that for for their entertainment or their own and with the harry potter series if people are really clamoring for that if there are people who are still really part of that that world and really care about it deeply i'm not really particularly bothered by it will i be bothered by it if the show actively does harm such as you know actively talk shit about trans people or the main plot is like a man dressed as a woman is committing murders with the kill curse like, if that shit happens, then there's a problem. But I think the problem is, is that my belief is I don't think I don't think there's a way to make this okay. And I also don't care. And I don't know how to, rec I guess, resolve that conflict. Because on the one hand, if you really want to like this world, I mean, there's probably better worlds out there. Rick Riordan's Demigod series is the shit. Um... But I also do think at what point does an IP become so saturated and poisoned? And I'll be perfectly honest. I can't actually think of another IP that has been so utterly toxified. Like, I actually have to think about Orson that. Orson Scott Card might. Oh, come ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one. I hadn't thought of Orson Scott Card, but yeah, the end. I don't know a whole ton, but I know that... He's deeply homophobic. Well, and a lot of fans have definitely, like, worked to have him not be on their favorite comic series. I want to say it was Batman or something to not be a writer, because, no, like, this Mormon, very homophobic, yeah. Also, dude can't write women to save his life. Minecraft, that's another good example. Is Minecraft tainted because, um... Notch, I think his name is, is a giant transphobe and kind of a conspiracy theorist? Yep, that guy, he actually debated, uh, he actually debated, um, Vosh, the guy who created Earthworm Jim, yeah. Oh, there's two separate people? I know the guy who created Earthworm Jim debated Vosh, I don't remember the name. Yes, basically Notch is a full-blown neo-Nazi, the guy who created Minecraft. Got it, got it. So no, I appreciate it, chat, yeah. So then the question is, can you play Minecraft without interacting with Notch's bullshit? I would say yes, because Notch doesn't run it anymore, he sold it. Notch may be the creator, but the game has moved so far away from what Notch created that at this point, I don't know if it actually bears similarity to what his vision was, and nothing about his vision actually had anything to do with his awful, awful views. So to some degree, is it still kind of weird? Yeah, but 
I don't know if that one's a really big problem. Yeah, Ren and Stimpy, I have heard things about the creator who also did horrible stuff. Like, there's a thing here is like, I guess you have to go by case, you know, a case by case basis. Like. Chess Burster in a can said, Jess of TGT, I really uh, fucking hate it when bootlickers and class traders use the famous and popular images of really wealthy people like J.K. Rowling as an ex example of so-called safe money billionaires, which is complete BS and doesn't exist. It never has it, nor will it never. Yeah, I agree 100% Chess Burster. Like, the thing is, is that self-made is always incorrect. Even if the person started from nothing and got up there, I'm going to say this really quickly. The number of things that have to get good and do well and function appropriately. All of that stuff does not make you a self-made billionaire. It's a person who got really lucky by various circumstances going exactly the way they needed to. Yeah, it's similar to winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. And so like... I'm aware of the FNAF creator. I struggle with this as well. We've talked about him on the channel. Um, Scott Cawthon has donated to a lot of trans charities too. He is a Christian conservative though. So I get, I have a hard time with Scott Cawthon because I really don't like that he voted or donated to Trump or Mitch McConnell for that matter. I also do know that he's devote, he's do donated significant money to the Trevor project and a few other places. So it gets weird with him because he's not consistent Anywho, but this does bring up the thing. Are you allowed to like Five Nights at Freddy's and still think Scott Cawthon's conservatism is cringe? Yes. I like the FNAF series. I think it's got interesting writing. I think it's got good stuff in it. I like the new game is disappointing, but good. And I think it has some really fun ideas in it. Well, and I think the big thing, too, is that, like, um, is people are going to like what they like. You know, I don't know if there's a whole lot of control other than like, hey, there's a feeling here, and this feeling is good, and I and, the, and I like this thing, right? Um, and something can make you very happy. You know, that's going to come up, you know, whether if you find the author out later, cool, is, is a shithead later, cool. But in the moment, like, no, you like this thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think kind of giving people a break for that is okay. I'm going to be honest. I really think it's okay. Um, just because, like, it's it's how do you hold that nuance in your head, right? Of uh, this is something I really, really enjoy, and this is you know the nuanced criticism I might have of it. Okay, we got to be able to hold both of those because we've definitely seen people go like hardcore with the criticism on you know particular media, and that generally seems to go south. But um, you know, I'm also not big on like bullying people or harassing them because they're in the LGBT community and they still like Harry Potter. Um, like, that's not... That's cringe, too. Okay? I'm just gonna be real here. What else you got? Yeah, so I guess the thing is, this brings up a really bright point. The problem is that unless Warner Brothers were to strike an unprecedented deal, none of the transformative elements would be a part of Harry Potter series unless Rowling wanted them to be. So everything from queer characters, Albus Scorp uh, Scorpius, queer life partner, um, Black Hermione, etc. Rowling has always exerted authorial control over her universe and the message it sends. Across books, across all of Warner Brothers' movies, though the movies were written by Steve Coves, she vetted all of his scripts, and even the Cursed Child stage play, which Rowling collaborated on. Anything that we respond to or love about a new Harry Potter series will still be something that ultimately came from J.K. Rowling, from the den mother who betrayed us. And given that she incre increasingly embraces mean reactionary politics in a post-Harry Potter writing, I'm dubious that any new Harry Potter series that would gain her approval will contain open-hearted, optimistic kindness that drew so many people to the original stories. And see, that's the thing. To some degree, I don't actually think this is... I, I don't actually know with her if it's actually a possibility to do Death of the Author. Because Death of the Author is an authorial thing. It's about whether or not you can whether or not the author matters in regards to making interpretations or just the material, right? We don't need to think about what the author meant. We just look at the actual word. But in this case, it's a different thing. It's a question of, is there going to be a way in which you could engage with this material and still 
find that kind of openness, that kind of support, that kind of, um, I guess, representation that we deserve? Probably not. And I think that's the issue is that this person makes a really good point. Unless this thing is completely out of Rawlings' hands, Rawling can just do what she wants with it. She can erase any trans characters, any kinds of attempts to make very real movements forward. And again, that's it. That's all of it. So the problem is, is that if you really want to watch a new series, should it come out and this not, this not just turn out to be a rumor, do it. On the other hand, my concern is, is that you are still going to be playing into this. And this shit that she can't seem to keep offline is going to keep being there in the background. Right? So I just want you guys to consider that, okay? If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.